So hello and welcome to the Alpha Artist Q&A. Today we have Nick Turner with us. Nick, welcome. Uh, it's such a pleasure having you here and speaking with you through video for the first time. Yeah, uh, thanks for so, having me. Yeah, of course. Uh, I would love to start the conversation learning where you are right now and uh, how is this crazy year going for you so far? Uh, I am in the south of France right now. Uh, I've been here for the last almost three years now. Uh, um, and I've been kind of stuck here. I came here because I grew up here and I had my mom at a house and she passed away and I came back thinking I wanted to try to uh, stay here for a while and I didn't know the condition of the house. So I, I gutted the house myself and I'm not, I'm, an, like, I'm a painter, but I've never worked on houses. So I, I didn't mm -hmm. know what I was doing. I got really way, way over my head. Um, and I've been here three, almost three years now. I've finished the house and it's for sale and I'm leaving. Um, but I've kind of been stuck. And then during the lockdown, I, nothing really changed for me because I wasn't mm -hmm. going out. I was just in the house working. Um, so now I'm just anxiously waiting for things to uh, be done. And so I can get back to normal, some kind of normal yeah. life. <laughs> and yeah. Art, yeah. Yeah. Let's see what normal life is going to be like. Right. I don't think it's going to be exactly yeah. the same, but uh, um, well, not, not what it is right now either. Um, traveling, Nick, yes. Um, I'm used to traveling a lot and I do think I'm a little mm -hmm. concerned what that's going to be like in the next couple of years, like how easily we'll be able to, to move around mm -hmm. internationally, especially. Um, mm -hmm. No, for sure. Makes sense. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so, Nick, for those who don't know, can you tell who is Nick Turner as an artist? Can you talk a little bit about your practice? Um, yeah, I've been, uh, I went to Parsons in New York and I went to high school here in France. Um, and my grandmother was a painter from Berlin and I grew up around her a lot in her studio a lot when I was very young. Um, and I went from painting to drawing to photography and now it's kind of a mixture of both, but it's kind of always been about nature. I've always had a fascination with nature. Um, I did a little bit of stuff in New York when I was living there in college. I tried to get into shooting portraits and I did a little bit of fashion and then I lived out West. I have friends on a ranch out there and I went out, out West and, um, and I grew, but I grew up riding horses and I had a horse for a long time. Um, and so I've always incorporated horses or some type of nature into my work. And that's it's kind of stayed present for the last, 20, 20 years, but I probably didn't consider myself a real, a very serious artist until well out of college. And I was trying to figure out how to actually make a living, um, taking pictures and drawing and stuff because galleries, it's not very clear in art school. They don't, there's not mm -hmm. a lot of business, like the business side of art isn't really taught very well, I don't think. So that was something I had to kind of figure out figure it on my own um but i have yeah. a, my my interest is in, like i don't have one specific i've tried a lot of different things and there's there's an overlap but um mm -hmm. i don't really have one necessarily one way of uh or one medium mm -hmm. that i'll work in all the time i know that's that would be my follow-on question so when you're working do you usually work in one specific work and then like, you can move on to the next one or you're working several different things simultaneously like i can see a lot of like the, the a lot of that you take from the photographs into the drawings like it's of course like all like related uh but i would love to understand a little bit more about how, how do you handle so many different techniques um well, what, before this, before I came back to Europe and before this whole shutdown uh, stuff happened, uh, most of my work, I was doing trips like all over the world, basically, and shooting and drawing and keeping these journals on the trips. And then when I get back home, I would just go through everything and I'd start 
kind of, and I get, that's kind of how I was building a body of work. So I was in Iceland, I went to Easter Island. Um, I was in Chile, I was in Japan. I was pretty much all over the place. I'd be going and shooting and, and uh, but none of the, none of the works on paper or the paintings were done. They were all done after traveling. And then I was back in my studio. Um, and some of them mental because I wanted, I like feeling, um, I like actually touching art. Like I like holding photographs or holding works on paper. So the mm -hmm. photographs is kind of something that I, I like to do, but I also need something that's actually uh, has some kind of kind of physical physical yeah. thing that I need to be working on because um, the photographs it's all it's all visual, but and so mm -hmm. I, I kind of need both. They're both they're two different two different ways mm -hmm. of working, but um, yeah, no, it's definitely very complementary, and it's not something uh, that. Uh, still a lot of artists do right a lot of artists moved into digital art like or even if they create um sculptures let's say they, they have like a team of people there that, that are doing the work for them so it's it's really interesting to hear that and i i, I do appreciate it too um is it there a work that i would like to talk about since i'm sharing some of your works here something that is like more special for you. I know it's hard to uh, point out one work. I know it's like like a lot of like your children, like in a way it's hard to pick one, but like if you wanted to go more in depth into one of the works. Um, the works that I've been doing, especially since I've been kind of stuck stuck at home for a while is, um, is a lot of the drawings because uh, I really wanted to break down uh, like horses, for example, like I wanted to break them down into the, the most minimalist, um, the least amount of marks on paper or on canvas. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing that. I've been repeating the same, a lot of the same drawings of horses for a long time, trying to uh, break them down. And it's, all the painting and drawing that I do, it's very organic. I'm not someone that plans plans out in this very, I'm not a very organized person at all. I have tons of things I'm doing, mm -hmm. but I'm very bad at like structure. Um, mm -hmm. and I'm, a, I'm very aware of that though. So I try not to, I'll try to figure out way, I'll work in very short periods of time, very intensely, and then I'll stop working on stuff completely. But if I try to really, work for a long period of time on the same things, I usually end up killing, killing the drawing or overworking it or, and then I wanna go back and end up throwing stuff out. So mm -hmm. I kind of will work very fast for a short period of time and then I'll stop. But I've been repeating these horses for, all, for quite a while and I'm still haven't gotten to, I haven't found what I, what I actually was looking for. And it's, I, it's hard to explain it, what you want out of paintings, I think for me at least, but I know when I, I know when it's there, then I'll, then I know, but it's hard to actually know exactly how to get there um, mm -hmm. when you're working. Yeah. Yeah. Or to explain what is it, I, I, I can totally understand that. And can you talk about an uh, inflection point in your life? Uh, could it have been something personal or professionally, like something that really turned like the path that you're going and influenced you to be where you are today um, um i mean one of the one of the biggest influences i guess was probably my mom um because i grew up i was i was actually homeschooled before i never was in a, a normal high school i was homeschooled and then i was put in a french high school um and then i went back to the u.s for college um but I traveled as a kid since I was maybe two, three. I've been traveling um, like with my mom. When she homeschooled me, we'd go visit areas that I was studying. Like we went to Florence in Italy when I was studying uh, certain, t certain periods in art. We went to uh, London when we were studying some of the medieval periods in history. Mm -hmm. Like, so my, my upbringing is this very romanticized, like romanticized, as kind of cinematic view of the world and it's it wasn't till probably the last couple of years where I started thinking back on my childhood and, and and the way I think compared like 
looking around the world and that's now what I want to try to um I, I, the work isn't I want the work to be very substantive like there needs to be some context and history in the work I have trouble with work that's just aesthetically pleasing but there isn't a real substantive mm -hmm. body of work so I think that I would I mean my mom is probably my biggest influence but I didn't start thinking about it until after she passed away which was four years ago um and I didn't mm -hmm. I didn't nothing it didn't really click the same way now I, I feel much more like I know kind of where I'm going and how I work mm -hmm. and before I was kind of law I was just trying to plan figuring things out I didn't really know who you know I wasn't really standing firmly in my in my own kind of as an artist I think I was trying all these things I was influenced by I was trying this or that or thinking what what was trendy I when I was living in New York I was very like around some of the gallery scene and I wanted to like oh this is what the trend is and it wasn't until mm -hmm. I kind of removed myself from all that and kind of have been isolated now for a couple of years where I kind of feel, okay, this is actually who I am as an artist. This is what I want to do regardless mm -hmm. of, you know, what this person is saying or this gallery is showing. Or, so it's, it took a while, I think, but yeah, that, to that, to get to that maturity point, I think I had to go into the art world and then kind of step out of it and be on step my out. own. Yeah, and now that I've been kind no. of away from it, it's it, I have a very different view of what I want to yeah. do and what's important, you know? I think there is even a very famous quote from Picasso that like first you need to really know the system to be able to break from it. And so yeah. I think like in a way, like we all have to submerge ourselves into a more traditional market uh, like and uh, space. So like eventually we can start innovating and like being who we really are. Really are. Um, so you touch a little bit on like what you want for the future, but like maybe like if you wanted to add something more about this, uh, where do you see your career developing? You said you're leaving the south of France. Uh, maybe like a geographical. Uh, um. you know, yeah, well, there's a few things. One is I'm going to go to the coast for a while because I, I, I have to live on the ocean. Um, mm -hmm. So I'll be either the west coast of France or Portugal. Um, I might go down to Portugal because I love I love the, the west coast of the, the Portuguese coast. It's like one of my favorite places. So I might go down there and base myself from there. Um, but I, I books, I, I love art books, like big mm -hmm books with photography and drawing and text and like and I, I really want to publish I've been working on a few okay. myself for a while I want to publish art books like I want because then it shows you it's you see you know a selection of work and stuff but when you have a big art book you can see the full context context of mm -hmm. like a body of work and the artist and mm -hmm. I like I like to see all the messy journal pages that you know yeah. like, um, I love I just love art books I, that's that's what I really like to do is publish. You know, I can definitely on, picture on works, you know. Yeah, so. I can definitely picture like a beautiful bo book with all of your work, the collages, like letters. Yeah, uh, yeah. Like, that's, that's that's exciting. I look forward to seeing it. And Nick, now to um, finalize our conversation, it's supposed to be like a quick chat. But I wanted to know what was it during this year or during hard time? Like maybe like a book you read or like a movie, something that like kept you going. You mean you mean inspired me? Like yeah, inspiration was or yeah, something that inspired you, like, for instance, for me, I remember doing lockdown, I really started doing more meditation, like, and, like, and people share, like, the most different things, you know, some uh, cooked a lot, some read a lot, like, and something that, like, our audience could uh, take advantage from, like, and, and try out uh, on their own lives, maybe, like, it, and it can be, like, it can be, like, a Netflix series, like, something. Uh, well, something I haven't, uh, I mean, this is not really art, art related, I guess, but it's very much a part of me, um, which is, it's kind of always been a struggle of mine being in the art world and also being, I'm, a, I'm, obs I'm not obsessed, but I've always been a very big uh, proponent of fitness and health. And mm -hmm. uh, 
I think one of the one of the even tasks what I when I came here to work on this house and I didn't have I mean it's a it's a three almost three thousand square foot seven bedroom house wow. that I, I gutted the entire house um, and I did it I did it myself but one of my biggest things and I have friends that I've tried to push also is 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 uh, is is discipline and um, taking on things taking on things that you don't want to do to expand your capacities mm -hmm. as a person and once you're like yeah. even looking back when I first came here I I, I probably I didn't know what I was doing, so I didn't have any real reference point of what I was getting into. But um, when I look back now, my capacities to handle problems and to deal with uncomfortable situations and things that I normally I'd probably like wouldn't even attempt to try mm -hmm. would run want to run away from. I think um, that's a huge thing that in the last year that I've I've realized is in terms of what humans are capable of when we actually are okay with being uncomfortable in situations. I think yeah. every, I think that's a huge thing is for me now when I, when there's a problem or something I don't want to do, I usually will do it before I do anything else just to have this habit mm -hmm. of like, Oh, I know what this Challenge. is. I mean, you know, yeah. And when you're, when your capacities are ex that expanded, I think your things become much easier. And I think People, that, I think if you never take on things like that, I think it's things that are very hard, um, especially as you get older. So that is mm -hmm. one of the big things I took away from coming back here is um, oh, amazing to take on take on things that you normally don't think you could and keep expanding your capacities as a person. But yeah, that's that's what I would say. Well, thank you so much. It has been a huge pleasure yeah. speaking with you, learning more about your life, your work. Uh, and uh, for those who are watching, see you next week. <laughs>